Hello and welcome fellow motorsports fans. My name is Marcel and since the Asian Le Mans series has just concluded last weekend I figured it would be the perfect time to give a little recap and just talk about the racing I has just finished. Now I want to try a little bit of a different format which is I will just try to pick out a few key points to take away from this full five race season, discuss it a little bit and then yeah let's just see where we all stand afterwards eh. First up, we've got a few things about the LMP2 class, obviously the big, the top dogs in the series. And my first standout thing was Julian Antlauer on his LMP2 debut, well, his first ever racing series in an LMP2. And he has just been on it from day one, really, but in particular in the latter rounds, he's been stunning. He's been one of the fastest guys on the grid. And it's no real surprise that Proton chose to give him a hypercar seat for next year now. He has proven that he's clearly just as quick, if not even a little quicker maybe in prototypes than he is in GTs. Uh, I'll be honest and say he stood out more to me here than he normally does in the GT racing stuff. So I am very, very happy. And it's one of those guys that you definitely need to watch out for in WEC if, you're not, if he's not on your radar already. The second point, once again, a driver who should already be on your radar, but he has just confirmed it once again, is Malti Jakobsen. The Danish young up-and-coming superstar, I want to almost call him already. The thing is, this, this guy has just so much talent. Yes, it'll still be a year or two until he's finally going to be driving in a hypercar. But if you somehow have been watching sports car racing in the last couple of years and have and don't have that guy on your short list of people to watch then please add him now he is one of the best prototype drivers period he has turned the fate around of this particular the 04 car in this series so many times they've been in trouble early on seemingly in every race and still somehow ended up winning the championship winning a few races along the way so just a brilliant brilliant performance throughout really the last LMP2 related point is the weird and bizarre storyline of the number 99 because they had a few very very key actors in all the seats and unfortunately it just didn't quite work out for various reasons. Now the team originally was supposed to consist of Alhati, Nikita Mazepin and Louis Dallatraz and the problem was already that Mazepin uh, got sick I believe between the uh, second and third round and had to get replaced by Philippe Albuquerque. Well, this is probably an upgrade, even all things considered. At the very least, a sideways kind of swap, not a downgrade in any way, shape or form. But um, yeah, this already at least shows it wasn't quite meant to be for the car. They were very much championship contenders. They won two out of the first three races. Um, Louis Dallatrez, in my opinion, the best prototype driver at the moment if I can say this at the very least an LMP2 for hypercar it is very hard to tell because some of the hypercar guys obviously only stay in hypercar don't do LMP2 and then it makes it really hard to judge it might be one of the Toyota boys is actually the very best or whatever but he is he is in contention let's put it this way and he still well couldn't quite win the championship and this unfortunately mainly comes down to Al Hati who for my mind he was always one of those better uh, M drivers but the performance he had in the fourth race i believe the first one of the last round either way yes should be the fourth one overall was truly truly shocking and unfortunately it did ruin their entire championship run because the car had to get entirely reassembled or i think they even had to get like uh, had to source a spare chassis from somewhere if, if i remember correctly and it just didn't really work whatever they rebuilt overnight just didn't work on the sunday it was slow all day not competitive and the, yeah, just a really weird thing with Alhati wrecking under the safety car and taking out the championship leading GT3 as well. So yeah, unfortunately, one of those negative takeaways. But on the flip side, Delatrez continues to be Delatrez. And for me, this is always going to be a key point. Now, different class, but it needs to be said. LMP3, a key thing to take away is once again, I don't see the point of LMP3. And just to make this clear, not the class overall, I think it's great. It seems to be a fantastic learning tool for young drivers in particular, also for, you know, newer bronze drivers and everything. I really like the car, but I don't see the point of including the class in a series if you can only field five or six cars. Um, it, it wasn't really competitive. It it did produce some entertaining racing, but it never felt like you could take the results seriously, if you know what I mean. So it, there is no points to take away from this LMP3 field for me, aside from the fact that the LMP3 field felt a bit unnecessary, if that makes sense. Now, 
So with this out of the way, let's rather talk about stuff interesting in GT3. First on this list for me is Optima Motorsports actually performing very, very well this year. Obviously they are a top team in the UK normally, but on the European level, they have always, you know, disappointed me a little bit last year. It's, you know, weren't really in contention to win any of the big things. And at the very least in this series here, they came to fight. The Cottingham car, I believe the number 69 it was, that was very competitive in particular. And I do think they will be doing damage on the European GT3 racing scene this year. So this is a, just a team to watch out for really. In a similar fashion, we've got my personal highlight of the entire thing, I want to say, just because it came entirely out of nowhere. And this is bronze driver Alban Varuti, the reigning European GT4 AM champion. He debuted in GT3 for the first race of this Asian Le Mans series and his debut started with total domination. He was he put it on pole and just drove off into the distance. Almost repeated the same in race two. They had some sort of complications if I remember correctly, but I know it wasn't his driving to blame. So that guy just came entirely out of nowhere and looks to be one of Europe's top bronze drivers straight out of the box, really. Now, obviously, yes, the BOP was probably very favorable, as you'd expect if a GT3 is dominant, no matter who's driving it, really. But nonetheless, he's a guy to watch out for. Whichever car he'll be driving for the full season this year will probably be a contender in any bronze category immediately. Last but not least, and this is one especially important for the WAC fans out there that maybe haven't been keeping up with GT World Challenge Europe as much because this lineup has been present there last year as well, which is the number one, number 91 rather, Pure Racing Porsche, the Mentai Racing sort of backed, supported. I don't really know the full arrangement there, but pseudo factory squad in WAC next year anyway, it'll be. And... Yeah, they started their season on the right foot by just winning the category in GT3, doing so in pretty dominant fashion despite getting wrecked, as I said, under safety car in one of the races and not finishing it at all. They still managed to take the title. Um, I think you can do the maths yourself if you win a title um, consisting of only five races and you get DNF'd in one of them through no fault of your, uh, of your own, that is a very, very good achievement. So yes, in particular, obviously, Bruns Drive, Alex Merkin, but also the two, Klaus Bachler and Joel Sturm, both very, very solid. Sturm in particular seems to be really quick for silver. He's done the same in the GT Open, I want to say, where he's been driving. So one to keep an eye on and certainly looks like this Porsche will do a lot of damage in the WEC GT3 field. So watch out for it. Anyway. This is once again your time to head down to the comment section and tell me what was your favorite thing about this year's Asian Le Mans series. Which race did, did you keep in mind most and more importantly which driver did impress you the most. This is obviously, you might have noticed by now, I am all about the drivers. Otherwise, um, I would be very happy if you could like the video to support me a little bit. And, and anyway, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in a future video.